I had surgery and I was in a sling for six weeks and for six weeks I couldn't really train at all. So my body fat percentage was somewhere around 16%. It was the highest it had ever been in my life. I did the bioelectrical impedance scale and it had measured me at 3.5% body fat. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Steven here with Team Euphoric and today I'm gonna to be sharing with you the three best and three worst methods for determining body fat percentage. Last week, I had uploaded a video called what is your ideal weight and what is your ideal body fat percentage? And on that video, I received a question from Anna Foley and Anna asks, great message, thanks. What do you consider the best method to calculate fat percentage? Well, Anna, this is a terrific question and it's something that a lot of people don't really know, but there are many different methods for calculating body fat percentage and not all of them are created equal. There are going to be some that are going to be very accurate and some of them are going to be way off. But one thing worth noting is none of them are going to be 100% accurate. Every single one of the methods that I'm going to be discussing is going to have some degree of error, but some of them will have a small degree of error and then some of them could have 50% plus degree of error. So you wanna be careful when determining which methods you want to use to determine your actual body fat percentage. Before I get into the three best and three worst, there is actually one way where you can legitimately determine 100% how much body fat somebody has on them, and that is going to be through a cadaver dissection. Unfortunately, you can only perform this on somebody who is not alive, and if somebody is alive, they will not be alive by the time you finish the procedure, so this is not going to be optimal, but that is really the only way to 100% know how much body fat somebody has. You would have to weigh out all of their organs, all of the water in their body, all of their muscle mass, and then you would have to separate all of the fat mass, dehydrate it, put that into a separate container or a weighing station, and then you would have to compare the two to determine the body fat percentage. But unfortunately, not a lot of people are going to want to go through the pain of getting their bodies dissected. So this leads me to the three best and three worst op options. In terms of these, there are no particular order, but the three best options, number one is going to be hydrostatic weighing. This is when you weigh yourself underwater, and this is going to be one of the most accurate ways in determining your body fat percentage. It's going to be anywhere from one to 3% degree of accuracy. So it is going to have a little bit of inaccuracy in it, but it's going to come down a lot to the practitioner who's putting you through it. When you do underwater weighing, any breath that you have in your body, any air that you have, that is going to cause you to float to the top. And that is going to give a false impression that you are actually leaner than you actually are. Whereas if you are somebody where you are able to expel all the air out of your bottom, you're out of your body, you are going to sink toward the bottom and it is going to give you a much more accurate reflection. So this method right over here, it's very, very accurate, but the depending on the person that is being tested and also the administrator, if they don't fully get all of the air out of their body, you can have a high degree of inaccuracy with this method. But generally, it's going to be very, very accurate. The second best method is going to be an MRI. With regard to MRI, this is going to be terrific because you're able to actually see inside of the body and not only the subcutaneous fat, meaning the fat around your muscles, but also your visceral fat, your fat around the organs. One of the problems with the MRI is while you're going to be able to determine how much fat somebody has in their body, you're only going to be able to see the actual surface area of the fat that is in the body. You're not going to be able to actually weigh out that, body, uh, that, that fat mass. And that's very important to know because when it comes to fat, fat is not 100% fat. Roughly 20 to 30% of fat is going to be water. So if somebody is very dehydrated or if somebody has very, very dense fat, the fat mass is going to weigh a lot different than somebody who is well hydrated and somebody who has very, very fluffier or less dense fat. So depending on the type of fat that somebody has in their body and also how hydrated they are, that can throw off the reading. But generally an MRI is going to be a great way for determining body fat percentage. The third, this is the method that I use in my practice, this is going to be skin fold calipers. And this is going to be the most practical. Hydrostatic weighing and MRI, those are going to be very, very costly. And also you're going to have to wait a very, very long time. Whereas with skin fold calipers, all you really need is a practitioner and a pair of calipers to be able to perform it. One of the things with regard to the skin fold calipers is that there's not just one skin fold caliper method. There are actually tons of skin fold caliper methods. I'm going to include a link right up over here to a skin fold assessment that I've done in the past to give you guys an idea of the one that I personally use. But the one that I'm a big fan of is the metabolic analytics that was taught to me by coach Charles Poliquin, who has passed away recently, but that is one of the best methods that I've ever used. Another method that I used that I really, really liked was the biosignature modulation method. That one was his outdated version. It was also taught by Charles Poliquin and that one, 
I have been using that one since 2010 when I first learned it from Charles, but those are my two top ways when I'm using skinfold calipers in terms of using the actual methods. With regard to the actual skinfold calipers, one thing worth noting is that the practitioner that is performing the skinfold caliper assessment, it's going to be very, very important that they are very knowledgeable and very experienced with administering skinfold caliper assessments because it's going to take roughly 4,000 repetitions of performing skinfold caliper assessments before you can get really, really good at it. I've been doing this for 17 years, so for me, my eye and my hand is pretty good with the skinfold calipers, but if you are getting somebody who is freshly new to using skinfold calipers, there can be a high degree of inaccuracy with regard to the measurement. So you want to take each, uh, you want to take that with a grain of salt. Make sure that you find somebody who's been doing it for a while that is really, really comfortable with a pair of skinfold calipers. Now, this brings us to the three worst methods for determining body fat percentage. Number one, this is going to be bioelectrical impedance. Bioelectrical impedance, it's those scales that you stand on. The way that it works is it sends a current up one leg and then it goes all the way through the other side. And because water is an excellent conductor for electricity, the more water you have in your body, the more general, the more muscle mass you have in your body, the lean, the more water you're going to have in your body because muscle is roughly 70% water. So the more water you have in your body, it's going to interpret that as lean mass. So the faster the current travels, the more lean mass you are going to be expected to have. But again, this is going to be an estimate. And I've seen some bioelectrical impedance measurements that were off by over 100%. So I would not really trust bioelectrical impedance. I've never been a fan of this. I'm going to give a couple short stories. One of them, I remember when I was working at this big commercial gym back in 2010, we were doing assessments on people as a way to get people in for consultations. And there was this big jacked guy looking at him. I had estimated him to be at around 12%. He was fairly lean and he was very, very muscular. So we got him to hop on the bioelectrical impedance scale and it showed him up as 25%. We both looked at each other and I really had no idea what to tell him. We both knew that he was not 24%. I myself, I ended up doing bioelectrical impedance at that same gym and this was fresh off of my pec tear surgery. I tore my pec in 2009 and then in 2010 I had surgery and I was in a sling for six weeks and for six weeks I couldn't really train at all. So my body fat percentage was somewhere around 16%. It was the highest it had ever been in my life. I did the bioelectrical impedance scale and it had measured me at 3.5% body fat, which was absolutely false. There's no way that I was 3.5% body fat. Even the leanest I've ever been, I've never been close to 3.5. The leanest I've ever been measured was 4.9% body fat and that was nowhere near the closest to the leanest I've ever been. But anyway, another time that I ended up using it, this was a few years after my pec tear surgery, I had three different people measure me with calipers and I got 4.9%. And then when I went to go use the bioelectrical impedance scale, it told me that I was 24% body fat. And if you had seen me, you would know that I was not 24% body fat. I don't think I've ever been that high in my entire life. So bioelectrical impedance, you want to take it with a grain of salt if you are doing that. Next, the second, worst method, uh, the second worst method that you can use is going to be skinfold calipers. I know what you're thinking. You just told me that skinfold calipers is one of the best. Now you're telling me it's one of the worst. Well, if you recall, I said a lot of it is going to be dependent on the actual practitioner. If you have somebody who knows what they're doing, it's going to be very accurate. If you have somebody who's brand new to using skinfold calipers, it can be terribly inaccurate. And there is more than one skinfold caliper method. On the linear software website, you have the Duran Womersley method, you have the Jackson Pollock 3, 4, and 7 site method, and then you have something like the Perillo method. With regard to those methods, the Perillo method is the only one that actually takes your weight into account. The Duran Womersley and the Jackson Pollock 3, 4, and 7 site methods do not take your weight into account. So whether I weigh 500 pounds or whether I weigh 100 pounds, my body fat percentage is going to be exactly the same regardless of my weight, which is why it is a terrible method to use. So if you are going to be using skinfold calipers, make sure you have an assessor who knows what they're doing and make sure that you are using the correct formula. Biosignature modulation and metabolic analytics are my two favorites. I would never, ever, ever use the Jackson Pollock 3, 4, or 7 site, or the Duran Womersley. If you are going to be using one of the one of the skinfold caliper methods on linear software, go with the Perillo method because while it may not be the most accurate, it does actually take your weight into account. And then lastly, the most inaccurate method, this is going to be those online body fat calculators. If you go online and all it asks you for is what is your height, what is your age, and what is your weight, there's no way that they can determine your body fat percentage by those metrics. If I were to go on there right now, I would show up as way higher 
higher in terms of body fat percentage than I actually am because of my age. I'm in my 30s and I'm pretty much the same body fat now that I was 10 years ago, despite the fact that I am the same age, same height, same weight, same everything. The only thing that's changed is my age. But if I were to go into those online calculators and I put in all of my stats from 10 years ago versus all of my stats from today, even though the body fat percentage is the same, I would show up as a higher body fat percentage today just because of my age. So I would not go by those online body fat calculators. Do not trust those whatsoever. But those are pretty much my top three best and top three worst ways to assess body fat percentage. If you guys enjoyed the video, then be sure to smash that like button so I know to make more of these types of videos in the future. And if you're either new to the channel or haven't subscribed yet, be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, as I will be uploading new videos every single day. That's it for today's video. Thanks for tuning in, and I will see you again tomorrow.